Hi, it's Lindley Oz. I'm going to talk about this whole thing that's coming up here in early June where Jared Kushner is going to finally reveal this whole peace plan and everything. We're going to talk about that and you're going to see how what I have here on the screen, how it plays into that or could potentially play into it. I don't know. I was coming home from dropping off some things to my son and my mom called me and she said, hey, have you heard about all the child trafficking that has been going on lately? It's more than I've ever seen in the news just in the past few days. I said, no, I've been so busy the last couple of days. I haven't had a chance to really check the news like I normally do. She said, yeah, it's extra bad. I'll send you some links on it. So that was that, and I really didn't think too much more of it other than that's horrible, and said a quick prayer and thought, wow, you know, just another sign of the times we're living in. So then I was sitting down making this video here that you're watching. In fact, I already have the video done. I wanted to add this to it. And I was looking up the Bible passage in Joel that has to do with dividing Israel. So I go to this verse. Let me just show you on the screen. Now, this is actually Joel chapter 3, verses 1 and 2, not 1 through 21. But it says, For behold, in those days and at that time, when I restore the fortunes of Judah and Jerusalem, I will gather all the nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, and I will enter into judgment with them there on behalf of my people and my heritage Israel because they have scattered them among the nations and have divided up my land and have cast lots for my people and have traded a boy for a prostitute and have sold a girl for wine and have drunk it. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. I read the commentary on that some time ago because I was always confused by that verse. What does this have to do with dividing Israel? I never understood it. So I looked at the commentary and it's talking about child trafficking. Then all of a sudden it hits me what my mother was telling me. And I'm thinking, I'm sure that this verse has a physical direct meaning as well. However, I also wonder if that is a sign to us. We're getting ready to possibly divide Israel. Okay. And in the same verse talking about dividing Israel it talks about child trafficking. So I'm looking up stuff on child trafficking and I come to this here on the independent, all sorts of stuff going on with child trafficking. And then even more interesting on UN News, it says rising human trafficking takes on horrific dimensions. Almost a third of victims are children. Note there, rising human trafficking. This article was published in January of this year. 2019. So there is a rise in human trafficking. Now this verse in Joel is widely used to describe dividing Israel. Here you can see an article from 2011 by Joel Rosenberg, a message of warning to the nations. Do not divide the land of Israel, understanding the book of Joel part five. And he quotes Joel chapter three, verse two, but he leaves out that last part I just read to you about child trafficking. So what does this mean? Could it mean something? I think it's definitely interesting. That's for sure. I think there is a direct meaning to that in this verse. But I also have to wonder, is it a sign to us? Because this is a prophetic verse as well. Is this a sign for us of what's going to be going on when Israel is divided and God brings down judgment? because of this. Okay. They have scattered them among the nations and have divided up my land, have cast lots for my people. And here we have child trafficking going on. Very interesting that this year, an article was put out saying that human trafficking is on the rise and it takes on horrific dimensions. Almost a third of victims are children. I just have to say, I don't believe when it comes to God or his word, that there are any coincidences and human trafficking, child trafficking is a huge deal right now. In fact, you can go Google it yourself. It has reached epidemic proportions. There is tons of stuff on YouTube, tons of stuff 
articles and everything all over the internet, horror stories from people who are now adults who had a situation when they were younger. There's videos being done by different individuals saying that something is going on at Target parking lot late at night in relation to this. Again, epidemic proportions. It's something that we're really hearing a lot about right now. So is it coincidence that the Bible happens to mention right there in the same section? It's talking about Israel being divided and then child trafficking. I don't think so. So that's why I wanted to bring it to your attention. I'm going to get into some other things in this video here, but I wanted to mention this to you first. I was just blown away when I saw this. God is stating he's going to enter into judgment on behalf of his people and his heritage Israel because they have scattered them among the nations and have divided up my land. God says it right there that he's going to pour out judgment when they do this. And I'm going to show you now what's getting ready to happen just very briefly about this whole peace agreement. Jared Kushner and what's getting ready to happen. And then after I show you that, I'm going to show you evidence that every time the United States of America gets involved with trying to divide Israel, something tragic happens here in the United States of America. And many people are very concerned if Israel gets divided via this peace plan, what's gonna happen? So let me go ahead and share that with you now. Most of you probably are already aware. You can see here on the screen, Jared Kushner, U.S. will present the long-awaited Middle East peace plan after Ramadan, and he will send immigration plan to Trump by next week. I'm just going to point out some highlights here about it, and I want to show you why many people have good reason to be concerned about this. There's a lot of problems with this from different perspectives. Of course, the Muslims are upset. At least it is my understanding that many Muslims are upset about this because they feel that because of their heritage going back to Abraham through Ishmael, that Jerusalem belongs to them. And then, of course, you have the Jews and the Christians going back to Isaac through Abraham that feel that Jerusalem belongs to them. So this has been a very long battle between the Jews and the Muslims over this piece of land. So there have been many prophecies concerning America dividing Israel and what could possibly happen, including America being split down the middle through the New Madrid fault line a major earthquake and just splits the United States of America in half. There have been several people who have had prophetic dreams and visions about this. So that's one problem. There's also concerns over something devastating other than an earthquake happening here in the United States of America. And I'm going to show you at least 10 different times where America tried to divide Israel and something devastating did indeed happen. I'm going to show you that, but let's look at these key points about this upcoming event taking place in June, right after Ramadan. It says, Senior White House Advisor Jared Kushner says the Trump administration will put forward its plan for peace in the Middle East after the end of the Muslim holy month of Ramadan in early June. Number two, Kushner, the son-in-law of President Donald Trump, provides few details about the plan to reconcile the notoriously intractable disputes between Israelis and Palestinians. And finally, number three, but he assures that the proposal itself is very detailed and will hopefully represent a comprehensive vision for peace. Now let's take a look at Michael Snyder's article from December 25th of 2016, it says 10 times that God has hit America with a major disaster after the U.S. attempted to divide the land of Israel. Now, the beginning of the article talks about Barack Obama, and that's not really what I'm doing this video about right now. So we're going to skip down to the 10 times 
that we tried to do something and it had a major impact here in the United States. Number one, the last time the U.S. government refused to veto an anti-Israel resolution at the U.N. Security Council was in 1979. On March 22nd of 1979, the Carter administration chose not to veto the U.N. Resolution 446. Four days after that, on March the 26th, the Egypt-Israel Peace Treaty was signed in Washington. As a result of that treaty, Israel gave up a tremendous amount of territory. Two days later, on March the 28th, the worst nuclear power plant disaster in U.S. history made headlines all over the globe. The following comes from Wikipedia. It says the Three Mile Island accident was a partial nuclear meltdown that occurred on March 28th of 1979 in reactor number two of Three Mile Island Nuclear Generating Station in Dauphin County, Pennsylvania, United States. It was the most significant accident in U.S. commercial nuclear power plant history. The incident was rated a 5 on the 7-point international nuclear event scale, accident with wider consequences. So there is reason number one. Number two, on October the 30th of 1991, President George H.W. Bush opened the Madrid Peace Conference, which brought Israelis and Palestinians together to negotiate for the very first time. In his opening speech, Bush told Israel that territorial compromise is essential for peace. At the exact same time, the perfect storm was brewing in the North Atlantic. This legendary storm traveled 1,000 miles the wrong direction and sent 35-foot waves slamming directly into President Bush's home in Kennebunkport, Maine. Reason number three. On August the 23rd, 1992, the Madrid Peace Conference moved to Washington, D.C., and the very next day, Hurricane Andrew made a landfall in Florida, causing $30 billion in damage. It was the worst natural disaster up to that time in U.S. history. Number four. On January the 16th of 1994, President Clinton met with President Assad of Syria to discuss the possibility of Israel giving up the Golan Heights. Within 24 hours, the devastating Northridge earthquake hit Southern California. It was the second worst natural disaster up to that time in U.S. history. Number five, on January 21st, 1998, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu arrived at the White House, but received a very cold reception. In fact, President Clinton and Secretary of State Madeleine Albright actually refused to have lunch with him. That exact same day, the Monica Lewinsky scandal broke, sending the Clinton presidency into a tailspin from which it would never recover. Number six, on September the 28th, 1998, Secretary of State Madeleine Albright was working on finalizing a plan that would have had Israel give up approximately 13% of Judea and Samaria. On that precise day, Hurricane George slammed into the Gulf Coast with wind gusts up to 175 miles an hour. Number 7. On May 3, 1999, Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat was supposed to hold a press conference to declare the creation of a Palestinian state with Jerusalem as the capital. On that precise day, the most powerful tornadoes ever recorded in the U.S. ripped through Oklahoma and Kansas. At one point, one of the tornadoes actually had a recorded wind speed of 316 miles an hour. Number eight, on April 30th of 2003, the roadmap to peace that had been developed by the so-called Quartet was presented to Israeli Prime Minister Ariel Sharon by U.S. Ambassador Daniel Kurtzer. Over the next seven days, the U.S. was hit by a staggering 412 tornadoes. It was the largest tornado cluster ever recorded up to that time. Number nine, in 2005, President George W. Bush, the son of George H.W. Bush, 
convinced Israel that it was necessary to remove all of the Jewish settlers out of Gaza and turn it over entirely to the Palestinians. According to the New York Times, the very last of the settlers were evacuated on August 23, 2005. On that precise day, a storm that would be given the name Katrina started forming over the Bahamas. The city of New Orleans still has not fully recovered from the damage that storm caused, and it ranked as the costliest natural disaster in all of U.S. history up to that time. Number 10. On May 19, 2011, Barack Obama told Israel that there must be a return to the pre-1967 borders. Three days later, on May 22nd, a half-mile-wide EF-5 multiple vortex tornado ripped through Joplin, Missouri. According to Wikipedia, it was the costliest single tornado in U.S. history. So after that, Michael Snyder goes on to discuss what was taking place at the time, and this was the end of December, and he's mentioning a U.N. Security Council resolution that had been passed that Friday previously to him writing this article. Clearly, you can see that there has been very devastating events, some of them very historical, that have happened every time the USA tries to divide Israel. So, as I mentioned, many people are concerned about this upcoming peace plan that's going to be revealed by Kushner after Ramadan. People are wondering, what is in this peace plan? What's going to happen? Who's going to sign it? Who's going to enforce it? What will take place? But then, of course, the biggest question that will be asked that we will be watching for is who will confirm this covenant with many nations? 